Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about a few ways to take the lacquer finish off of your guitar. So here is the guitar that we're taking the paint off. This is all a spray can lacquer job. In fact, I'm going to take this off and then in a subsequent video, I'm going to do a demo again on how to spray a proper sunburst. We're going to show you a couple different techniques and, and that'll be a different tutorial in and of itself. But for today, three different ways to take lacquer off your guitar and no, none of them are sanding. You will have to sand at the end to get it all nice and smooth again and there's going to be a couple extra, you know, things that you'll have to do to get it really nice and cleaned up. But I'm talking about pulling the finish off the quick way, what's going to work fastest and how we're going to get this thing back to the bare wood in the quickest way possible. So the three alternatives we're going to talk about today are lacquer thinner, paint remover and a heat gun. Chances are the paint remover, and I shouldn't say chances are, the paint remover or paint stripper and heat gun are going to be your fastest options. But you know, not everybody has those. If you're working with lacquer, chances are you have some lacquer thinner. And lacquer thinner has its own little quirk that makes it interesting to work with too. Uh, for, okay, safety. Let's talk safety for a second. As you likely know, lacquer is toxic. Lacquer thinner, toxic. Paint stripper, toxic. When you heat lacquer up, guess what? Toxic. This shit's all terrible for you, okay? So what do you need? You need a respirator, all right? Arguably some eye protection. I'm not gonna bother with that. I'm in a huge room. The fumes dissipate relatively quickly, but rest assured I will be wearing a respirator because this stuff is gross. Also some gloves. If you can get chemical gloves, do that, all right? They're gonna be way better. Lacquer thinner dissolves nitrile gloves. Now, unfortunately, that's all I have and I'm gonna wear them even though you almost never see me wear gloves because again, safety is, is important and I need to start practicing what I preach. But uh, yeah, lacquer thinner will dissolve those gloves, so will the paint stripper, so I'm gonna wear them to like add an extra barrier. But at the same time, if, you're, if that's all you've got, try to avoid touching any of this stuff, okay? You're also gonna need a putty knife or a scraper of some description. I mean, we can melt this finish away all we want, but it's not gonna remove itself. Uh, so make sure you've got something to pull the finish off with. Don't go too sharp, all right? I don't recommend that you use a chisel. I don't want you carving into your wood. We're just looking to actually scrape the finish off once it's no longer attached. So I think that about covers that. Let's have some fun. We'll see how this turns out. All right, so we saw our lacquer thinner in action there. Worked pretty well. Lacquer thinner does obviously dissolve lacquer because lacquer never cures, it only dries. Then you saw me light it on fire. Don't be an idiot. Don't do that. I'm in a huge shop. It's just do as I say, not as I do. Don't light your stuff on fire. Be smart, but it was pretty cool. And check this out. Hoo hoo hoo. Yeah. That's pretty awesome, I think. Another thing to note, if you're gonna do that outside or something carefully under controlled conditions with eight of your closest firefighter friends handy, uh, note that you need to be careful where you put it. 
it will also mangle the back. That's just kind of how it is. So you gotta have a plan for that as well. In my case, I am now going to take the finish off of the back. So next up, aircraft paint stripper. All right, there are a variety, there are a variety of paint strippers that work. Some of them proclaim to be non-toxic and they're like water-based and stuff like that. I personally have never had success using those. I've tried them uh, and I've never really had them work. That doesn't mean they won't work for you per se, but uh, I usually go with the disgusting stuff and uh, yeah, and just try to protect myself. If you have cuts on your hands and this stuff touches them, it will feel like you're burning from the inside. Uh, so definitely avoid that. Again, protect your hands, protect your, your lungs, uh, and just generally try to be careful. All right. The secret with this stuff is you lay it on relatively thick. You want to layer at least three millimeters thick if possible, uh, and you let it sit. Okay. Now you don't have to coat the whole surface in it. You can do just like a puddle, let that sit for a few minutes and then use the scraper to push that over. It'll take all the paint with it, but it'll still dissolve in another area. And you can just move that puddle around until you've got basically all of it. So we're going to use that to take most of the paint and crap off of the back here. You'll see how well that works. And then we're going to take the heat gun and go at the sides and whatever's left and you'll see how that works. Let's get the paint stripper over here and get this done. All right, so once you're done working with your heat gun and your paint stripper and whatnot, you should end up with something that's pretty well clean. Then it becomes time to sand and or scrape the rest of that off there to get it into a nice smooth finish. So this stuff's pretty straightforward. I like to use razor blades. You can use card scrapers. They're more liable to change your, your surface though, so you gotta be careful with them. Uh, and, and sandpaper. I like to sand my stuff up to 400 or 600 grit before I paint it. So. I just go in, hold my blade flat, I'll show you this in a second, uh, and, you know, scrape off whatever kind of gunk is left there. And I'm going to do that for the entire surface of the guitar, and then it's going to be done. So that's really about all there is to it. So guys, that's about it. I think you get the idea. You know, you use something to take the finish off of there, then you scrape or sand or whatever you need to do to get the wood nice and smooth again so it's prepped for another finish. Speaking of which, stick around, stay tuned. We're gonna put another finish on this fairly soon and it's gonna be, I think, pretty interesting. And that about covers it for today. So as always, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it informative. Please find a reason to give it a thumbs up for me. I would appreciate that and stick around. We got some interesting stuff coming up. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you next time. Have a good one.